Yeah. All right, good morning. We got any Seinfeld fans in the audience? Yeah. A few? Okay, good. One thing led to another, and this talk ended up having a lot of Seinfeld references in the slides. Yes. As in 100%. I didn't intend it to be that way, but such is life. There have been a number of recent events that have happened over the past, uh, I don't know, a couple years that have caused me to feel compelled to give this talk. So I'm talking today about a message that I want to deliver to all of you folks. Now this isn't going to be a awesome tech talk like the one we just saw from John Davis, but it is technology related, uh, in my opinion. And that's the field I work in. Uh, this has to do with the organizations we work for as well as ourselves personally. It's something that I've seen in the tech field and I think it's something that we can all do better at. Uh, anyone here familiar with uh, Toastmasters? Hi, Public hi, speaking? Hi, hi, hi. Holy moly! <laughs> okay. One of my goals today is to help, uh, is to get you guys, to get everyone here to think uh, along the lines of, um, in Toastmasters, one of the things that you'll notice is you suddenly start becoming very aware of all the ums and ahs that people say in speeches. It kind of ruins it for you. You start counting them and you think, if only I hadn't gone to Toastmasters, I would be ignoring this all the time. But it's a good thing because it causes you to be aware of it and it causes you to be better. This talk, this presentation is similar to that. There are several items that I became aware of and as I noticed them more and more, I said, oh wow, I'm doing this, I need to stop doing it. So I started out by saying that I think we need to fix some things in, in our field and in general. And it has to do with accountability and reputation and you know working for a decent company. So we all want to work for or work at a decent place or if we're entrepreneurs, have a, a cool company that we work for. We don't want to work for uh, something that's lame. So, this is relevant to you in that respect. It's relevant to you in the respect of um, recommendations. So I want everyone to pause for a moment and think about a company that you would perhaps not recommend your friends to go to. I'm going to give some examples of things that have happened and of places that I've worked and others have worked, but I'm going to change all the names to protect the innocent and the guilty. But think about a company that you wouldn't tell your friends to go to or even like your worst enemy, right? I'm sure we could all name a few in the Omaha area. You would say, no, stay away from there. Why would you do that? Well, you wouldn't want your colleagues or your peers to say, oh, hey, thanks for telling me to go apply at Company X. And then they get there and like, why'd you tell me to go there? This place is a mess. Well, what happened is over the past year, there's been a lot of confusion for me personally, and it's caused me consternation because I don't know where I stand on the fence. There's a company that I used to work for here in Omaha. And despite leaving, I still had a lot of respect for that company. And I would tell people, sure, it's a great place. I stay in touch with the people that work there. There's a lot of good things about it. These things that have happened, these events that have happened, have caused me to now second guess that. And I, I struggle with it, because I'm not sure anymore if I can offer a good recommendation for that place. It, it feels like it'd be risky. Like, well, I don't know if I want to tell people to do that. And that bothers me. I mean, maybe it shouldn't, but it does. I, I, I was proud, I am proud to have worked there. Let me put it that way, still am proud for the time that I spent there and the contributions that I made. So I hope things will change, they always can. The moral goes that a reputation, uh, reputations can be built and they can uh, last for a long time, but they also can be destroyed rather quickly. So the three things that I wanna talk about are these three concepts or lessons, if you will, of how we can improve. They are the unanswered call, the dropping of the ball, which I'll explain, and then what I like to call the fake date. There are three things that we're largely getting wrong 
at our companies or that our companies are getting wrong or even in our personal lives. This applies broadly everywhere. And I'll tell you at the end what we can do about it. Okay, the unanswered call. So this is pretty self-explanatory. The idea here is simply following up. That's really what this amounts to. If you're in the middle of a conversation, an email, a phone call, make sure that you return that call. It's critically important. <laughs> Sounds simple, but this happens, or the unanswered call, or unreturned call, happens way more frequently than you might care to admit. An example I'd like to give is that last summer, a young gentleman that I knew who had just graduated from college was traveling across the country, and I found out the night before that he was passing through Omaha. I happened to work at a consulting company at the time, and uh, I thought it was a pretty neat place to be. We had a mix of internal and external consultants. We had a lot of cool things going on. I said to him, hey, you should come check this out. Here he is, fresh out of college with a computer science degree, and speaking of reputations, I would gladly vouch for his work ethic and his skills, without a doubt. So I walked over to my HR and I said, can we get him in to, uh, maybe not an interview, but at least get him scheduled the next day to have someone meet with him and get him in the pipeline, as it were. And they said, sure, why not? Uh, he was only in Omaha for a couple days, so we were able to make that happen got to show him around the office, he met with a few people, and that was that. He left Omaha and went on his way, went back home to New York, and I hadn't heard anything. A week or so went by, and it dawned on me, hey, I haven't heard anything from anyone. So I shot him a message, and I said, well, what's going on, any news? And he said, I haven't heard from your HR company, or your HR department. Really? That makes me look bad. I was embarrassed. <laughs> so I went over and I talked to him. I said, how come you haven't called this guy back? They completely uh, did not. Um, Uh-oh, there we go. They completely did not uh, return the call, completely did not follow up. So in a nutshell, whether it's an email or a discussion, we need to be diligent about making sure that we continue that conversation. The next thing is what I like to call doing what you say you're going to do, or the ball drop. But doing what you say you're going to do didn't fit the whole Seinfeld theme, so the ball drop. It. Can you see that? Can we dim the lights? Is there a light dimmer around here? Not sure. They were dim before. Thanks. So doing what you say you're going to do, it sounds similar to the follow-up. It's more like the offensive side of doing things instead of the defensive side. There we go. Look at that. All right. And when you don't, then we have that phrase, dropping the ball. I'd like to tell another story about a young professional I know. She was working for a different consulting company here in Omaha, working for a parent company really liked what she did there. She was happy, things were going well. The, the parent company, as it were, was uh, happy with her, but the situation at the consulting company wasn't very good. It was kind of toxic, things weren't working out well. So she went to the main company and explained this to them and, they, and said, we, we need to, I need to do something. I can't continue working or living like this. They essentially said, sure, don't worry about it. We'll take care of you, we'll get you on. And then they proceeded to drop the ball and nothing happened. She went to another consulting company who said, hey, we have contracts with that other main company. So she deliberately went there as opposed to another choice in hopes that she could still get on with this main company. She got there and they said, yeah, well, we actually don't have um, 
uh, the contract's not going to work out. So she's at this consulting company, kind of burning through time, and they said, but don't worry, a person with your skills and talent, we have plenty of jobs in the Omaha area. Won't be a problem. Six weeks go by and nothing happens. So she takes it on her own accord to go find another position, which is kind of odd if you think about it. You're working for a consulting company. That's their job is to find their consultant's positions. Right? That's what they do. So she found a position from this other company, went to her current consulting company and said, I really like you guys. I like the company as a whole. They had nice benefits, a nice atmosphere, and she wanted to not have to switch jobs again. She said, but it's been six weeks. You don't have anything for me. So I found this other job. What do you think? They basically did, well, whew, go ahead and take that other job. Like it was a relief for them. So she goes to this other job. This was for a scrum master position. She gets there and they said, yeah, I'm sorry, we already have a scrum master. I felt so bad for this person. It's one series of events after another of people just completely dropping the ball. I don't understand how you get hired for a position and then you go show up on the first day and they say, I'm sorry, we already have a scrum master, we don't need you. I'm happy to say she's now at a better position that's been going well for the past month. So that's good. Moral of the story, don't drop the ball. It's easy to do, it's easy to, to let that happen. The final thing is what I like to call the fake date. Have you ever been in the supermarket or the store and you met a friend you hadn't talked to in a while or in the hallways, you meet a colleague or an acquaintance you haven't talked to in a while, the conversation goes something like this. Hey, how's it going? Great, how are you? Oh, we should do uh, lunch sometime. Um, I'm sorry, I'm off by a slide. I meant to say even if it's something that you're uncomfortable doing, you should still do what you, say, what you say you're going to do. OK, so the fake date. I was saying that the conversation goes something like this. You say, hi, how's it going? And you say, we should get coffee sometime. Right? And then it never happens. Oh, hey, let's do lunch. Yeah, we'll do lunch. That's one of those ums and ahs gotchas. I started even catching myself doing it. And it's just no good. It goes in concert with the other two concepts where um, you know, people start to say, I wouldn't work there, or this person has a bad reputation, they don't follow through, they drop the ball. If we can start being better at all three of these things, and then we can start having a better reputation. We can start saying, not only do we have a reputation for ourselves, but uh, the place where we work has a reputation that's good as well. Um, so I try to keep cognizant and, and keep aware of when I think that the, the fake date concept is happening. So the good news is we can do something about this. We can do it in our personal lives. Now I'm happy that everyone's here at bar camp. It feels a little bit like preaching to the choir, but you can go on and talk to your companies and tell them about things that need to be improved. A case in point, we had a not so great interview process at a company that I work for. A couple of us realized this and we said, we need to work on this, we need to fix it. So we went to the HR department and said, you guys gotta fix the interview process. It, it makes the company look bad. And they did. So there are things you can do. I started the talk by, by saying the phrase, getting it great. That was the slogan of a company that I used to work for. And over the years, I've really come to appreciate that slogan, getting it great. I keep it in my mind when I'm interacting with people, when I'm doing things. I keep it in my mind when I'm doing my work. 
So remember, everything you do has your name written on it. So I hope that you too will go forth and keep in mind the idea of getting it great and ask yourself that question. Am I getting it great? Because if you are, then we can all go forth to do good things. That's what I got. <laughs>